everyone. My name is Chris. I'm the Camping Stitcher here on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and my website. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel mostly about cross stitch, but sometimes I'll include other things as like today I'm going to have some crochet. At the end I'll tell a little campfire story, but I'll warn you ahead of both of those things. So if you want to scoot out, you can. <clears throat> Thank you for stopping in. I hope you, if you're new, you find a reason to stick around. And if you're returning, thanks so much. I have two things that I'm celebrating this week. Monday was my two-year floss tube anniversary. So um, I have a few uh, thank yous that I'll share at the end. And I just reached five thousand subscribers actually it's a, it's a little over five thousand now so thank you guys so much for subscribing and liking and hitting that notification bell i'd like to say a special thank you to jane and julie um stitching with jane and julie for mentioning that i was uh close to 5k and helping me get over that milestone and missy missy from two needles pulling thread Thank you for posting a st in your stories because that just I think that just like helped me get over the finish line. So I really appreciate um, anybody who's ever really helped and mentioned and shared. You know, this is a great community. So I really appreciate it. So thank you. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's been almost two weeks. I kind of, I thought I'd come back on Monday, but... It didn't really work out for Monday because I figured who was going to want to watch a video on tax day. <laughs> Maybe I should have done it. I don't know. But um, thank goodness our taxes were. <sighs> Man. Taxes. What can you say? Anyway, I hope any of my friends who are in the accounting arena are okay this week and you're surviving and not too exhausted because I know it's hard. So I have today, oh, I've got a lot. I've got, um, I think seven finishes, eight finishes. Yeah. A new release. Um, I have whips. I have haul. I have plans. I have a little bit of crochet. Um, and then, you know, the usual jibber jabber. So I'm going to just jump right in with the FFOs. And I have my book of days here. So here's where we are. And I have a special tab with whips because otherwise I'm not going to remember. I'm not going to remember fabric or anything like that. So. The first one I'm going to show you is probably the oldest whip I have. Um, it, I started it in September of 2022, and it is the world's largest pin keep. It is um, Butter Butternut House Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. I'm going to show you the pattern, the chart. I'm going to show you the chart. I'm going to show you the picture. There you go. And I... I made it into a pin key. And I'm going to find some big mamba jamba pins. I'm telling you. But anyway, no, I, I really, it, it was a fun stitch. I, this is on 36 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. And I used the called for <clears throat> flosses. I just kind of switched this row of um, yellow here was not going to show on my fabric. So I switched it up for the darker yellow of the house. So it is done. I sewed it into a pin keep. Otherwise, sorry, otherwise known as a pillow. But there's the fabric I used for the back. And I did some, I just, hand, this I hand stitched on because I wanted to go down the center of this little crochet trim. I did not crochet it. I bought it that way, just so you know. But it is done. Let me tell you, this, man, did I have to rip a bunch out on there. Those pumpkins were giving me a hard time. I don't know why, 
but I'm happy with it. And I stuffed it with cluster stuff. You can get that at uh, Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> so that was finish number one. I have to get a box to throw stuff in. I don't want everything all over the place. Okay, so next I have the Robins are here. Brenda Gervais. Oh, sorry. It's glare. It's not raining yet, but it's going to rain. So the Robins are here. And I stitched this on. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is on 36 count Vintage Country Mocha by Zweigart. And the frame is from Home Goods. It came like it came with glass and everything. I took the glass out, but this is how I decided to finish it. This is a uh, in Home Goods. They have a little display on one of the end caps of Laura Ashley. I think it is. They had a bunch like they were in pastel -y blue and pink, and then they had this antique white. So it was. Oops, sorry. Centering. I'm really happy with the way I, you know, I like making pillows, but I do like little frame things every once in a while. So this will go on my spring display because the robins are here. And like, I want to tell you quickly, this back here it was actually a flap that flapped. It, it flapped. <laughs> Can I say that one more time? So what I did was um, I actually used an X-Acto knife to cut it completely off, took the glass out, and then I, I, um, I don't care for sticky board other than using it for small pieces like this, but I don't mount my stitching on the sticky board. I don't like, I don't like what sticky board does to stitching. I, it, it, to me, it sucks it right down into it and it kind of like, I don't know, the fabric gets sucked down and the, the stitching kind of looks wonky and I can't get it to look right. So what I do is I use the sticky board to put a piece of batting on there. So the batting goes on the sticky part and then I just either fold it over and double side tape the back or I lace the back. So that's, this is actually a little bit of stretched and then I just use um, acid-free double-sided tape to secure it. So there's, the robins are here. That's FFO number two in the box. Okay, let's stay on the spring theme here. Okay, the next one I did was Tis Spring. So these were sitting in my finishing pile for a long time. And Monday I just got like, I was just like, let's finish some stuff. So that's why you're seeing all these finishes. I have three more things in that bowl to finish. And I'm going to try to do a finish every day. One of them is the pears, and I'm afraid of them. And there's nothing to be afraid of, but I just have to sit and, and make my head, my head wrap around the two pieces of fabric and then the seam and the seam. It'll happen. It's just um, I need to give myself time to understand it. So anyway, next finish is Tis Spring, Bernard Gervais. You might be sensing a theme. This was awesome. Um, my friend Kara sent me the thread, the coffee dye. She had coffee dyed her threads. And I did use the um the sock eye, which is this right here. These flowers. I didn't end up using the what was it? Robin's egg. Um, I ended up using Dove. For some reason, the it just they weren't, it wasn't showing up on my fabric. I don't know why. It just happens that way. It's a weird thing. But this is done on, hmm, 36, oh, sorry, 40 count. 40 count vintage country mocha. And here's the finish. And I just used some spring-like fabric that I had. Put my label on it and Rick Rack was from Hobby Lobby. Cluster stuff stuffing. I just love that stuff because I stuff you stuff and stuff and stuff, right? 
and then it gets round-ish. And with the cluster stuff, I, now you do what you, you do you, but I hit it with a, an iron and it, it makes it, it's stuffed, stuffed, but it's more flat. It's a little wonky down there, but, and you could move it around, you know, so, but I love it. It's pretty. Another piece for my spring display, which I feel like I'm just in time for. <laughs> Okay, next, <clears throat> I'll be in time for um, Patriotic this year. This is My Home Sweet Home, Brenda Gervais. You know, I have so many of these littles and I wanted to get them done. So that's what I've been doing. I, I alternate, I'm trying to finish a small in between some of the bigger projects. So hang on a second. I think allergies are kicking in already. So this was done on 36 count light mocha, light mocha by Spygart. <clears throat> Another pillow. I love this. Oh my gosh. I just, I love the, the muted patriotic colors. So this, I used all the coal for thread and I just used some basic polka dot a mm, little bit of <coughs> excuse me a little bit of I don't know like this is like some kind of twisted trim that came from Hobby Lobby Hoblob so there you go finished palooza like the way I just shove it in the box okay so now my friend Stephanie chose this as her birthday sal. So if a bunch of us are doing it, strength and dignity from Annie the Proper Stitcher. And I stitched mine on, <clears throat> this is on um, Pomp, Pomp, Pompous Reed by the Stitch Me, no wait, Atomic Ranch, sorry. Pompous Reed by Atomic Ranch. I have to change that on my Instagram post, don't I? Because I put Bistitch Me. It's not. Anyway. I'd use the cold fur colors except for Chablis. Weak Chablis was not showing up on this fabric. So I just swapped it out for Weeks Carnation. And I wanted to frame it. I, I was kind of tired of pillows. <laughs> Um, no, I wanted to frame it because I wanted to put it up on my wall right by my, uh, where I work, um, over there. I'm trying to surround myself with inspiration. So, um, I found this frame in Hobby Lobby and it, it came with this, it came with this white mat and in the center of the mat, it was a four by six cutout. And I only leave myself a two inch, um, two inch border. And this is probably why you want sometimes to do a three inch. Cause you never know what kind of frame you're going to find or how big of a, I usually like my stuff frame close. So that's why I use two inches. Anyway, long story short, I didn't have enough to wrap around something to fit it in this frame. So what I did instead was I took the frame apart, took the glass out, took the artwork that was in the mat out. I put the backer board back on with the mat. So now there's just the mat with an empty hole here and the backer board. I took um, sticky board and I put batting on it. So the stitching does not touch the sticky board. It's just the, the mount as at that point, it's a mounting board for me. And then I laced this piece and then I mounted it on top of the mat board. And so it, I like it. It came out fine. And it's going to be framed and up on my wall. So I'm happy about that. So that's strength and dignity. And this was a stitch along for uh, the New England stitcher, Stephanie, for her birthday. So there you go. Be gentle with that. <clears throat> okay. Next. 
I have two, three, two, three more finishes. All right, so Emily Call had put out, she had put out this pattern. I think this is the one she put out first. And I remember when she put it out, I was like, that's awesome. I want to stitch that. Wouldn't it be cool if she did it? I am enough. And what do you know? She did I am enough. <laughs> so I was really happy about that. Um, but I wanted to put it around me on my work area. So I went a little bit crazy with the choice of um, floss. And I picked... I. I so okay, let me back up a little bit. So Sherry, just so Sherry, had shown um something that a product she was working on and she was using sulky blendables. I think it was 4011 she was using. And I was like, hey, I have them. I got a bunch of those for Christmas. I got the whole like little suitcasey thing and it had like a set of the blendables in there. So I went, I looked, and I saw this. I think this is 4007. The details are on my Instagram. Anyway, I found the thread that I wanted to use and I found a fabric I liked. So this is a 36 count flooded gum by Fox and Rabbit. And I started, I just, I love it. I started, I just used that one sulky on it and I love the way it came out. I was a little... When I first started stitching it and I only had like one motif done, I was like, oh, what'd you pick this for? This thread, you're not gonna, this is gonna bother you. But no, as you, you as I kept doing it, either it grew on me or I, I just, <laughs> it just came together. So I really like the way it came out. It's gonna be sitting over by my work area. I just finished it with no trim. This one's no trim, my label. And I love it. it. Awesome. Emily has such wonderful um, patterns, uh, charts. So, so nicely designed. So, of course, I had to go pick another color because I want it bright. I want it bright around my desk. It's kind of, I wanted them to stand out. So, I picked 36 Count Possum. By Fox and Rabbit, which has a, a bluish hue to it. And this is the sulky I used. Hang on. I just have the bits. So this is Sulky Blendables 4055. Oopsie. And that's what it looks like. Okay. And I did the other. I am brave. I'm I'm hoping she she does more. I mean I'll 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 just do every single one. Emily, you, you keep, you keep making them. I'll keep stitching them. I just love these. I used, this is a, um, what do they call it? A layer cake. I can't remember which collection it was from, but I picked it up when we were on vacation and no trim because I didn't want to take away. I just wanted the focus to be the words. I am brave. So now <clears throat> I know I enabled, um, Anna. Well, um, Stitch Rody, um, and she saw this one this morning, and you enjoy stitching them, Anna, because they're awesome. So that is it for my FFOs, except for my new release, which I'll pop in right now. There's so much stuff around me right now. Um, okay, so my new release is... Spring Blooms. Oh my gosh. You know, I flip my iPad. Usually the camera's that way. And now it's over here. Anyway, this is Spring Blooms. Um, this was just popped into being. It really started out being something else and ended up being this. So this is 95 by 88. And I've stitched it on 36 count linen, linen but it's suitable for any fabric, any size that you want to do. Um, uses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, ten colors of DMC. Well, it's all DMC. And there's just a tiny, tiny bit of back stitch <clears throat> around the bird, the robin's eyes, just around three sides of the robin's eyes. 
So, and I'm super happy with how this came out. So there's Spring Blooms. And this is available in my Etsy shop in PDF and paper. And thank you for um, to everyone who's already purchased it. I hope you're enjoying stitching it. I can't wait to see it. Please tag me if you stitch something. Um, just tag me at the Camping Stitcher because um, hashtags, they've ruined hashtags. What can I say? They don't work like they used to work. So, so that is my new release. Um, got other couple other things coming down the pipeline. <clears throat> I, I don't release on like any kind of schedule, uh, rhyme or reason, because this is like my retirement thing. So I want it to be, you know, relaxed, enjoyable. I don't want to have to be, I mean, I do have some deadlines, but not, not anything that I don't want to work with. Um, I, if you're going to the library stitchers retreat, um, this weekend, I'll have a trunk show there. They're going to have a lot of awesome trunk shows there. Uh, I can't wait to see. Um, I just want to see some pictures on how it goes. And I'm sure you're all going to have a great time. I wish I was going to be there. I do hope they do it again next year. But I don't know. you never know, right? I will. I would hope to go. But this year it wasn't going to work out anyway. There's too much stuff going on around here. I don't know why. Anyhow, any doozy watsy. So I think I got I got all the FFOs. That was like a not a lot of FFOs. I'm saying that was a lot. Um okay. So what have I been working on after the FFOing? Well funny you should ask. Um I did have the Hawk Run Hollow Zoom that um, Pam from Stitch New England, uh, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough does. So I did get some work done on my map of Hawk Run Hollow. It's getting there. What is this fabric? Because I can never remember. And I have a card, but I don't think it's in there. Map of Hawk Run Hollow is done on aged hazelwood. 36 count by XG Designs. XJU Designs. Never going to figure that out. And I have a needle stuck there, but you know, it's okay. We're friends here. We're friends here. You're going to understand. So yeah. Um, I was actually, during a Zoom, I just kind of do the fill-in over here. But... Um, I'll get back to taking this out on Sundays. This is my Sunday stitch too. So I won't zip that up right now because what else did I work on? Oh yeah. Okay. So during that, was it during that Zoom? Yeah, I think it was. We were, I was talking about, um, you know, some things you just work on and it's just like they, they seem to take so much time and it's like you never get done with them. And Kelly uh, Belfast said, well, why don't you just do two threads a day or something? And I was like, that's a great idea. So I pulled out my American sampler, which was on my whip go for April. And I fulfilled the five times, but I really, I didn't really see much progress. But she said, do the two. And I said, okay. So I think I'm getting there. Only problem is, I don't know if you noticed, half the house doesn't have mortar. Because guess who's running out of Pelican Gray and has to order it? I just, I don't, I mean, it doesn't say. It doesn't say you need two skeins. Does it? No. So I don't know what I did. I must have, I don't know, maybe I... Maybe I didn't have a full skein. It's a possibility. But anyway, I started on the fence and the garland on the fence and I'm really having fun with it now. So I'm gonna be doing more than the two. I don't iron my stuff in between guys because I don't like hitting my special threads with heat that much. And I showed, I showed like some things you'll see a lot of. But yeah, I started to stitch 
the fence. I don't know if you could see it. It's kind of, it'll show up because this is all grass in here. But here's the fence post and then the garland. And I'm almost across the whole bottom with the fence posts. Wait, let's try this. Oh, mamma mia. Is that better? No, not really. Anyway, but I'm almost across, I finished with the whole fence post. I got in a rhythm with the fence post and I didn't want to stop, but I had a, I said, you got to make a floss tube, so you better put it down. All right, so that's American Sampler by Plum Street. And I'm leaving that out because I'm going to be working on that later on. All right, what is in this one? Oh, okay. That was a new start. That was a new start. That was a new start. Well, there's a lot of new starts over here. All right, first, let me do this one. Okay, so my friend Lorraine, she is, oh, Lorraine keeps changing her name. Heartful Handworks on Instagram. She sent me an awesome, well, Okay, so she saw that I got this, she got this, and wanted to know, like, are we going to start it? And I said, yeah. And she was like, did you start it yet? And I was like, no. And then, and then in the mail, in the mail came this beautiful, beautiful ring bling from Lorraine. Thank you so much, Lorraine. It's just so special. So I was like... Heck yeah, we're going to start it today. <laughs> so we both started Proverbs 31. And this is where I am. It is not big, guys. This is this is not a big sampler. I mean, if you're looking for, like, to scratch that sampler itch, so to speak, this is a good one to do it with. Okay. But for, I, I have to, see, I put the deer in because I couldn't tell which way was up. Um... So here's where I am. And this is on 36 count pink salt lake by Fox and Rabbit. Fox and Rabbit, one of my faves. And so I had to put this little deer in. I don't know if you could see because I kept going, hey, which way? What way? Hey. But it's beautiful the beautiful little sampler. And this should be a quick one, but I'm taking my time with it. I'm trying to enjoy my stitching. Not that I don't enjoy my stitching, but I can I can get I can get some momentum going. And I did pick up I was missing one thread today, one DMC. It's a mixture of DMC. There's a weeks, there's some classic color works. It's really pretty. So this is this is what it looks like. So if you'd like to join us, I know I think someone's doing a stitch along. I don't know what the sal is. Are we, wait, let me know what you doing a stitch along. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Too many stitch alongs. Yes, I think we are. I'll put the hashtag in the box below because I don't remember my, our own hashtag. Sorry, Lorraine. I have to deal with my jibber jabber and now my memory issues. Okay, next up. So if you are not a member of Teresa Kogut's Patreon, you might want to consider it. This was a release just for April. It's for the tier two, three, and four. Faith, hope, peace, and love. I said, holy cow, look at that. Different color palette for Teresa. I mean, not really, but kind of. It's a little bit more muted and blues and browns. It's I love it. Those are mine. I mean, um, I'm, my husband doesn't know this yet, but we are painting our bedroom and it's going to be, well, it's already browns, but it's going to have some blues in it. The walls are going to be blue. So I said, well, wouldn't this look nice in our bedroom along with wisdom? Anyway, so here's my start on the first block. Love it. It is on Light Mocha 36 count. It's my guard. That's where I am. Just, I love these colors. I am s such a blue-brown person. Can you see that? Yeah, it's got a needle on it. I'm almost done with that one, that first block. 
So speaking of blocks, since I already started this, but there is that building block, Sal. I think it's um, Kathy and Missy or the Carolina Stitchers or both of them. I'll put both of them talk about it in their floss tubes. So go watch their floss tubes because I don't want to give you misinformation. But it's starting in May, building block sale. I have a couple of possibilities that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit when I talk about plans. But that would be, it's a block. Works. All right. My last start. Okay. So my fabric came for Rose Hill Farm Sampler. This was an exclusive in the Homespun Needlework Group on Facebook. I don't know when, if it will be generally released, but you had to be in that group to get it. It came with a very, very dark fabric, and I just was not... I don't mind ghosting because there is a little ghosting in this, even though everything shows up fantastic on the fabric. There's a little bit of ghosting on some of the, what is it, straw? It's Weeks Dye Work. Yes, I think it's, nope, Arrowhead maybe. Okay, these are the colors. Okay. And here I did my start. This is on... They stitch me dust dusty cottage hang on dusty cottage all right and there is my start i did get the whole border in so the border met up but not all the detail on the border but there she is love it i just some fabrics are just they just make the floss really just beautiful so I'm really happy with the way that's looking I was kind of a little reserved about it because it seems a little cooler but um the picture is is, is just doesn't portray it, it, you know that looks a little warmer but I really think it does look fine on that so that is that was my other start I think that's it for my starts, man. Getting stuff done, and I'm okay with starting because, you know, we were talking about this. You know, what's your whip count? What's your what's your starts? Uh, I can't have another new start. Listen, if starting a bunch of stuff or having a bunch of whips makes you feel weird, don't do it. If it makes you feel happy, go for it. I I you know we as little kids can't wait to grow up and do whatever we want and now we're grown up so we can do whatever we want especially in cross stitch so i mean don't go crazy don't make yourself get anxiety over it and if you do get anxiety then slow down or be monogamous but i have it you know it's like sometimes you just get that start itch and you want to scratch it so start something there's sometimes you go through your stuff but helen d just posted her video and she she did an audit um go watch it you do change over time and maybe your aesthetic changes or if you just came back into cross stitch and there's so many choices and you don't want to miss out on something so you get it and you start it and it's really not you there's pass it pass it along or Put the floss and the fabric in your stash and 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 give the pattern away or sell the pattern or however you want to handle that. But you do, it's your cross stitch, man. It's your hobby. There's no police. There's no rules. As Brandy and Emma say, there's no rules. Um, yeah, enjoy it. And, and don't let that stress you out. There's an, enough that stresses us out. So make it work for you um but like I said I don't do what I want so um what's next we went over the finishes the FFOs the new starts the whips uh now I got a haul 
actually got whole tank. Actually, I'm so excited because <clears throat> the hole that the hole that I was waiting for that got lost, the USPS lost it. They lost it. It was reshipped to me and it arrived late, but it arrived. My postmaster was calling me. I, you know, it's a shame. I don't know what's going on, but and they're on a good time. Anyway, so I did get some haul. I got the last of my market haul, and then a few things came today from one, two, three, Starch because I have a problem. Anyway, here's the last of my market haul. Mm. Here we go. And you've seen these before, but I'm so happy to hear it. I'm gonna, you're gonna see them again. Frosty Tiny Town. So excited. Gathering wildfires at wildfires. Oh my God. Wildflowers from Hands on Design. I am going to make this and I'm hanging it on the bookcases. Oh, right over there. Like that. Right? Oh, like that. Isn't that pretty? Now, Chantel, Chantel uh, shows this finish on her channel. Go look at it. Chantel's 141. Go look at it. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. And then here we go. Whoopsie. Lucky charm. Isn't that pretty? Summer house stitch works. Isn't that pretty? Look. This is done. I think she's got it done on 40 count milk and honey. Ooh. And there's four sided stitch in it. Is four sided stitch just like four back stitches like that? Tell me. I want to know. And Nisi is going to be having a birthday sal. So I purchased that. And I cannot wait to start it. Um, this has a special meaning to me because, um, it, and I'm going to be putting my mother-in-law's initials on it because she's my cardinal. We always think of cardinals for her and owls for my mom. So she's my cardinal. Okay. That was the last of the, well, no, it's, I'm lying. I'm lying. I lie. I lie a lot. Apparently I lie. Okay, so <laughs> I had I had to get the second um log cabin Christmas from from Little House. So there's log cabin bunnies. That's number two in the series. Here's the first one. Wouldn't that be great for the building block Sal? Yes, I know it would. And the blue flower. Mm. In praise of pollinators. Holy Manoli. So, if you don't watch Stitch Rody, go watch Stitch Rody because she shows this bird stitched on her floss tube today. It is gorgeous. This might have to be a, a new start soon. Hmm. It's all DM... Nope. I'm lying. It's mostly DMC. Weeks guacamole... Crescent chili pepper and crescent caramel. But she did she gives the DMC alternatives for those guys. Ooh. Okay. And um last but not least, because look at there's a fox in a rabbit. And and they're stealing flags or something. Well the rabbit is. Is the fox? No, just the rabbit. The rabbit's just stealing the flag. Plum Street, Plum Street, Plum Street, Plum Street. And we're going to be having a, well, the girls that are going to the library, which library stitches retreat, are going to be having a stitch along. And I jumped right in. And since I had some of the MPIs for Good Intentions by Kathy Barrick, I eh, got the other MPIs for it. And... I am waiting for my fabric. <sighs> USPS. Don't 
What's going on? That stuff's got to get better. I'm, I'm going to say something to you. Slightly controversial. I have no problem with anybody that works their patootie off for delivering our mail and stuff. But I will tell you something. There's problems with the distribution centers. And I was told by my postmaster that they were investigating it. Because it's not just Jersey. It's everywhere. So what in the heck is going on? I have never... I have never had to put this many claims in, and I'm talking both outgoing and incoming mail. So my husband's had multiple packages go missing from his side of the business, and I've had incoming packages go missing late. Everything that you, everything is marked, now they don't even, now they're not even scanning it. They're just saying in transit to the next facility. Patootie. Anyways, something's got to change. Okay, so enough complaining. Um, okay, so. Oh, there was one more thing I got, and I want to show you. Because this has to do with camping. So the South, Sassy Southern Stitchers. Oh, sorry. I think I'm shaking stuff. Well, Christy, Floss Boston Cousins, she showed this. And I've, I, I've admired bog bags, but I'm not a fan of the plasticky. But then she showed this backpack. Well, not this backpack, her backpack. This is my backpack. Anyway, she showed the backpack and I was like, oh, that's really super nice and that would be great for camping because usually I stick my stuff in a very floppy bag and it flops and I have to keep propping it up and it doesn't stand up. And this has the, the bog bag bottom on it. So the sassy Southern Stitchers were talking about the bog bag and they gave um the information for academy sports because if you go look at this on amazon it's like a lot of money i mean not that it's cheap on academy stitchers but it's like half the price so i went on academy not academy stitchers academy sports everything is stitching so I went on Academy Sports and I was like, oh, that's a good deal. And then I there was like a percentage off and I was like, even better. So I ordered it. So look. So another pocket. Here's a pocket. These pockets don't stretch very much on the side, but you could totally make use of them. So I, I'm just saying because look, like we're going to do like an example here. Here, here's my, here's my, oh, wow. Look how that goes in. Nice. Sweet. And it's going to stand up in the, my little closet where I stick my, um, my cross stitch stuff and it's standing right now. If you could see it, I don't, I don't want to move anything and make you dizzy, but that's fantastic. No more flopping. Everything will be protected. It's got plenty of room in it. I could fit at least, um, I don't know. I'll let you know how much I fit in it when I go camping, maybe soon. Who knows? So that was my last last little bit of haul. Thank you, Christy. And thank you, Sassy Southern Stitchers, for that. That was awesome. I was like, wow. Okay, so. Building block style. Okay, so. I am leaning towards. Well, you know, like, you could start a bunch of things. Why not? But I'm going to lean. I'm leaning towards starting this series for my, the building block style. Okay, because look, there's already two. Say you started something and it was a series and you were like, oh, I gotta wait for the next one and the next one, next one. But then you happen to have another series that were blocks that fit into that whole category. Why not? So this is my other, I mean, I, I've been wanting to start these, so I might, I might, I might just do all of them. Well, not all at once, but you know, get going on it. Get going on the series. So, yeah, I might start with spring salt boxes for May 1 for that building box style. Or you could also, wouldn't that be cool? Speaking of this, um, Stitch It in the Bluegrass, Spunky Jen and I are going to start this little stitch along in May. 
Um, not sure if it's going to be May 1st. I got to talk to Jen. Um, but we are going to start with May. I can't show it to you, but wait, hang on. I can show it to you if I go like this. May. Which one is it? Hmm. It's this one. Right there. So you could combo starting this with us and using it as your building blocks out. There's so many patterns. Um, Caroline Stitches did a whole thing on all the patterns that would you could possibly go watch it. I'll link, I have a lot of linking to do today. There's a lot of linking. I don't mind. I think it's fun. Anyway, so that's that. New style starting, I have to remember. Lorraine, I'm really sorry. We started a sale for the Proverbs 31. Was it Proverbs 31 sale? What are we doing? Why didn't I write that down? I must be losing my mind. It was all the finishing fumes. Anyway. Okay. So we got new starts. We got plans. I think that's it. Let me just check my notes. Hmm. Yep. I hit them all. Okay, so before I get to the crocheting, I just want to mention um, who I've been watching for Floss Tube. So I've caught up, well, I'm catching up with Heather and Jeanette, Crafty Cottage Stitches. Congratulations, Heather. Um, just so Sherry, if you didn't watch her last one, she's so funny. Uh, the two base stitchers. They're, they're a riot as well. Uh, the Carolina Stitchers. Um, the Sassy Southern Stitchers. And this morning I caught up with Jennifer, the Calculated Stitcher. And two new floss tubes to me. And I think this is uh, Hathaway Stitches that Amity and Erin have been mentioned quite a few times. But go check them out. They're awesome. And Amity has um, an Etsy shop with some of her original designs in it. Also, um, darling, darling new, the soul stitchers, Fanny and Marion, they are in France. Go give them a watch because it's just, it was so, just to see, I don't always stitch with what other floss tubers are stitching, but I love to see the creativity and what other people like to stitch and what they're drawn to and the color or, or, or maybe they're um, monogamous stitchers or maybe they're just, they like, um, you know, full coverage or something like that. Cause I don't stitch full coverage. So I enjoy watching it. So go check them out. So that's really it for the cross stitch. I'm going to show you my crochet. Crochet was my first craft. I don't know if I've ever told you guys that. I learned how to crochet when I was four. Um, don't think I was a prodigy. Pro, prodigy? How do you say that? Anyway, don't think I was special. Um, my great Aunt Marie taught me how to crochet because I used to bug her to make me doll hats. So she just taught me how to make little circles and they cinched in on their own. But then, you know, I, I just kept with it. So I've crocheted for, well, since I was four, so it's over 50 years. So I used to make blankets for people. I mean, I've made uh, sweaters and the only thing I really haven't crocheted, I have slipper socks. I've done that, but not regular socks. But um, I'll pick it up whenever I'm feeling like, you know, you know like I don't cross stitch it too much at night. Um, I'll sit and watch TV with my husband. So that's like when I would crochet. So um, I started a little blanket. If you go and look up, what is her name? Okay, Emma C. Makes. She's on YouTube. She has, a, and she's also on Instagram. So you can follow her on Instagram, beautiful crochet. Her sense of color is just, I just love her uh, color choices. Anyway, she has a tutorial, how to crochet corner to corner moss stitch with or scrap yarn. 
So here, I was like, oh, I totally want to do that because I have yarn. Big knitter, big crocheter. So here's my, I had started this as um, some kind of wacky, funky pattern. And then, you know, I put it away and I picked it up and I was like, oh, wow, I don't even know where I was. Anyway, here is what I've got done so far. And I'm just randomly approximating the stripes and switching colors. But this is moss stitch. So it's started here. And you crochet up and you're increasing on each end. And then when you're to the point where you want it, this is going to be like a little throw for a lap. Um, she shows you how to decrease. So if you've ever made like the Jacob's Ladder um, blanket where it looks like almost like granny squares on a diagonal, um, it's the same. It's the same kind of procedure where you decrease. I'm guessing you could probably make a rectangle if you do the only decrease on one side for a little while and go straight up. I'm not going to try that because this is a new pattern to me. But this is moss stitch. It kind of looks woven-y, but it's very flexible. And this is um, <sighs> Hobby Lobby. I love that yarn. I went shopping today and bought some yarn for another. Like I needed more yarn, but this is acrylic yarn. This is, if I make a blanket, it's it's more than likely going to be acrylic because A, it's economical. B, you can wash it and dry it. C, I've made wool blankets and it's just horrifying when someone, if you don't get washable wool and they wash it and they shrink it down to microscopic, it's just, no. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I'll make blankets out of acrylic. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not a yarn snob. But anyway, I was watching Jeanette and Heather and I have, I can't even tell you how many, <laughs> my original set of crochet hooks is boy, B O Y E. I've had them forever. Um, my husband bought me this Brittany set. These are all wood, right? While I love them, okay, they don't, they're nice to work with, but I notice as I'm aging and I'm getting more arthritis that they're not as um, forgiving and I do end up getting like hand cramps. So Jeanette had mentioned these Clover Amour. And I was like, not really, never heard of them before. It's been a while since I looked at crochet hooks. These are linked in my Amazon storefront if you guys are interested. That's a game changer. If you're if you're having problems with your hands or you're having like you 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 overuse your hands like I do. This is a game changer. These are so comfortable and they feel so nice. Um, I'm really glad I got the set. I was a little hesitant. The set I think was $42 for all of them. You can buy singular ones, but I was like, no, that's going to end up, if I end up liking them, they're going to cost me more money that way. And if I didn't like them, they were going to go back anyhow. So I love them. Um, I actually ordered a case for them. But it's a set of 10, 10 sizes from B to J, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then seven, H, I, J. That's so weird. I didn't notice that. Seven. That's so weird. Okay, somebody explain that to me. Seven. I've been crocheting for years and I've heard of it. Anyhow, I love them. And they're, they're fun colors. So yeah, I, I think if you're gonna crochet and you're not, like I have done, um, I've made doilies and I've made lace curtains and um, 
those are like the small steel hooks that you see that are so teeny tiny and you use the fillet, um, the crochet cotton, the, the, the thin stuff. I've done that. Um, and you know, like if you can crochet with a big hook, you, you can crochet with a little hook. It's just getting your head over that. But if you're interested in crochet, check out, um, Crafty Cottage Stitches. They do a lot of quilting, stitching, crochet. Also, Erica Arndt did a crochet needle review. I will post that in the description box. There's tons on YouTube if, you, if you've never crocheted or you haven't crocheted in years and you want to get back to it. I have always crocheted. I just don't usually show it. Um, I mean, the last blanket I made was mm, the end of last year was for the, the camper. <laughs> I made a blanket for the camper. So that's my crochet. And that's, that's about it. Um, last thing I have is a thank you for uh, reaching a milestone 5,000 subscribers. So here's what I'd like to do to celebrate. Uh, leave me a comment. Make sure, you know, you like, comment, um, subscribe. Um, use the word campfire. And if you are so inclined, tell me a campfire story in the comments. I would love to hear yours. That doesn't have to be about camping. Campfire stories are what you tell around the campfire. You can have campfire at your camp. You can have a campfire at your when you go at your campsite and you have a campfire at your cabin, you know, wherever. Backyard in your chimney, if you had the proper permits, of course. <laughs> um, so, yeah, do that. Leave me and then you, I will have you pick a, a PDF for my shop. Um, and this is open to anybody, anywhere that can get a PDF. So, it's not just the United States, it's everywhere. So, yes. Use the word campfire in the comments, and I would love to hear your campfire stories. If you don't have one, it's okay. Just use the word campfire. I will pick somebody for the next time. And that's it. So if you're not interested in a campfire story, thank you for sticking with me. This has been a little bit of a longer one for me. I kind of generally try to keep them shorter. Um, I do have a little story. It has nothing to do with camping, but it just happened, so I figured I'd share it with you. So thank you for stopping by. Happy stitching, and I'll see you next time if you're leaving. If you're sticking around, guess what? I'm sure you've heard, we had an earthquake. <laughs> Friday, April 6, 2024. My husband and I were minding our own business, doing our food shopping in ShopRite. We were made it down to the second aisle. I heard this thing like thunder. And then the whole building started to shake. Let me tell you something. I'm one of those people that'll ask you what's that when I know what that is because I can't believe what that is. That's how I operate. My husband knows this about me. Um, so the building started to shake and it, it felt like the floor got very unstable. Not that anything happened to the floor, but it felt like the floor was wavy and that you had, you couldn't keep your balance. And I was looking towards the front of the store and I could see the glass windows. They were like undulating or whatever. And it stopped. And I said to my husband, what the H-E double hockey sticks was that? Now I knew what it was. I knew it was an earthquake. So he looks at me and he goes, well, I, I heard they were going to be doing some military tests nearby, which is true. But that's, I knew that's, it was not that. I mean, no. I was on the highway when an F-14 flew over really low about 20 years ago. Nothing like that. Nothing, nothing like that at all. I said, that's not what it was, Bob. He goes, well, he goes, maybe the heat turned on. I'm like, come on. He, he was trying, not that I was going to freak out because I'm not a freak out person until later like I lose my mind later after the fact like everybody's okay and it's nice and quiet and then I lose it 
So we start walking and everybody's just kind of looking at each other. And then our phones start blowing up. My neighbors text me, oh my God, did you feel that? She didn't realize we weren't home. And I was like, yeah, I felt it. it we're in ShopRite. She goes, you felt it at ShopRite? And then my husband's phone starts ringing. And it's his brother who is on Long Island, New York. And he goes, you guys, did you feel that? You guys had an earthquake. <laughs> and as my neighbor sent me pictures of the, her TV that's saying, earthquake in Lebanon, New Jersey, which is, as the crow flies, six miles from us. So yes, yeah, so we had a 4.8 uh, earthquake, uh, no damage. Um, people were pretty generally like calm, you know, in shop, right? Kind of looking dazed, like, did you, did you guys hear it? We had an earthquake, that kind of thing. Um, I was, we were trying to get our food shopping done because we had half a cart full and we wanted to get out. No interruption of services or anything like that happened. Um, but we wanted to get home because the dogs were home. We didn't know, you know, we, we weren't hearing reports of damage or anything like that. 4.8 is pretty strong. We've felt earthquakes here before. But every single time it's been like, Who's big truck? Who's driving a big truck up the road? We live on a very rural road, and and generally speaking, we don't get big trucks up here. So when something like that happens, you're like, what? What is a big truck up here? Um. So we, I was trying to check out at the pharmacy, and some people were kind of rattled a little bit. The woman next to me was trying to pay for her prescription, and she like ripped her her twenty dollar bill in half. Like, she was just so nervous. She went to go hand it, and she didn't let go of it. And we were all laughing over that. But, um, so we got, we got checked out. We, you know, we were still getting, our phones were still, friends were checking on us. And it was, it was nutty. Came home, and the only thing, like, I was really worried when we walked into the house, because we have a, a big screen TV in the living room. And you don't know. I mean, I don't know. Are they, how, what are they rated for earthquakes? I have no idea. You know, you buy something. You live in New Jersey. You're not looking for... Like my sister-in-law that lived in Japan, She her house was built earthquake resistant. You know, that they're used to that. Um, we're not here. Yes, we live on a fault. People are like, you live on a fault? Yes, the Ramapo fault. Um, the only thing that was weird when we got home was my door to my craft room was open and it's usually shut and the only reason that probably was open is because it's a barn door it's a, on a slider and it shook enough that that would open if if things shook so i haven't checked it all this week but as of last friday we had over 40 aftershocks most of which we haven't felt we did have a 3.8 at six o'clock that night, as I was letting the dogs out, <laughs> my blonde dog was acting weird. And I thought, do you have to go out? Okay, let's go out. No, she really didn't have to go out. She was just weirded out, weirded out. The dogs were fine, by the way, when we got home. They just were like, e you're home. So I let them out and I had the back door open, the slider, and I start hearing thunder again. And it's, it's, I'm saying thunder because I don't know another word to describe it. It's like thunder, but from underneath you, not above you. It, it's just weird. And I'm sure if you live in an earthquake area, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have the words. I don't because I don't, you know, we don't deal with this. Anyways, standing in the back door, I start hearing this deep thundering noise. And then the whole house starts shaking again. And I yelled, I yelled for my husband. He's like, it's it's an aftershock, it's all right. And you know, like generally, <laughs> like my sister was saying, she goes, what do you do? Like, what do we do? Do we go, do we stay in? Do we go out? I'm like, I'm not going out. I don't want a tree to fall on me. My husband's like, no, you get out of the house. You either stand in a doorway or you get outside. And I'm like, but there's trees outside. They could fall on you. The trees are always falling around here. He's like, no, 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 you won't just go, you go outside. But he, we didn't move because by the time we thought it was over, you know, so that was, they originally said that was a 4.0, but that was a 3.8. And then we've, like I said, we, I haven't checked this week, but, um, it was 
kind of hoping to be able to know about the aftershocks because the original incident, they were saying something like they didn't, they couldn't tell you if it was a before shock before the big event, whatever that is, or an aftershock until an aftershock happens. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me now because generally speaking, um, one's less than the other. <laughs> so, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't checked it all this week, but I think last Friday we were over 50 aftershocks and they were very minimal and you, you don't feel them. You don't feel them. We have, when we moved up here, there's a seismograph on the side of the road. It's like a box with a cord. I remember asking my husband, what is that box with the cord? And he's like, that's for seismic activity. I'm like, there's earthquake earthquakes here? And he was like, there could be, but not like you would be worried about. And I was like, okay, it's no longer connected, I guess. Maybe they should hook that puppy back up. I don't know. But that is my campfire story. Everybody was okay. No damage here. I don't know if there was damage over in Lebanon where the epicenter was. Um, it was, it must be minimal or I know my husband did check out the foundation. He didn't see anything to note. Um, but yeah, things were a little shaky that day. So that's my campfire story this week. I had to talk about it because it just happened. And like, what a heck of a story. Um, so thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you're doing well. Um, I hope you enjoyed something about this video. <laughs> Jibber jabber is my specialty. And don't forget to leave a comment with the word campfire. And I will see you. I'm trying to get back on the Wednesday schedule. I will see you in about two weeks. And stitch away. I will talk to you soon. I have I hope this works.